So, by show of hands, how many have a good feel for what gemstone is? Ah, uh, very impressive. Good numbers. Um, also, by hands, how many have actually tried gemstone? Same people, mostly? Yeah. I would just... I don't think Dale. <laughs> <laughs> Dale's still jet lagged, so... <laughs> that was from the last trip, I'm still jet lagged. Right. <laughs> So I'll do a few slides for those who don't know briefly what gemstone is, kind of what the concepts are, and uh, then we can go from there. Um, the idea behind gemstone is it's a solution to some of the limits of traditional um, image-based small talk, where you're limited to one VM on one host, and you know your image runs in memory, so you're limited to RAM, and changes are saved at the last time you saved your image. And if you lose it when before you've saved or the power goes out or whatever, then you've lost your work. So gemstone aims to solve these four things. So in gemstone, we expand all these issues to uh, thousands of VMs potentially on thousands of machines. Um, the space is now limited by disk space instead of memory. There are transactions so that once something has been committed to Gemstone, you know it's saved, and trans transactions are acid. And once an object is uh, committed to Gemstone or to the database, it's guaranteed to be persistent. So some of the key features is uh, scalability. Uh, we have customers in the billions of objects running in production, of course. Thousands of users, thousands of machines, thousands of transactions a second, and literally terabytes of data. So this is really small talk in the large. Um, with the transactions, we have the idea that you would have with an RDB where there's commits and aborts of transactions. Um, Gemstone is designed around optimistic concurrency, which says that we don't think conflicts will occur, and if they do, we'll deal with them. Uh, but we also support pessimistic concurrency, aka locking. You can lock at the object level. And we have our version of namespaces shared in private. Also, security is um, very important in Gemstone. So object level security is what we have. So security is set in by individual objects on who can see it, uh, read, write, or modify. Uh, login security. We have the traditional user ID password, of course. Um, as of a couple years ago, we have single sign-on. So you can get a Kerberos ticket or uh, ID or credentials from a Windows login and use that to authenticate to Gemstone. LDAP, where you have, say, an LDAP server uh, doing password validation for you. So in this case, the password authentication is kind of outsourced to the LDAP server. Uh, we also plug into PAM. And new in 3.5, we have X509 certificate login, where you present a private key and a certificate to, to authenticate. Um, operations in Gemstone can be restricted by privilege as well. So there's different privileges. This is just a few of them. Garbage collection, system control, to control who has access to privileged operations. Uh, Gemstone is 100% small talk. It's turtles all the way down, all objects all the time. Um, NC small talk compliant with a few exceptions. Classes, methods, blocks, all the small talk stuff that you know and love. Uh, we support very large collections, millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of objects. Uh, searches can be uh, indexed, so you can uh, search by quality or identity um, on instance variables of objects in the collection. And we also have reduced conflict indices, which are designed to avoid commit conflicts um, when index collections get updated. Um, Gemstone interfaces to other small talks, uh, more on that later, but uh, we've had uh, these interfaces for quite some time. Gem Builder for VisualWorks, Gem Builder for VA, uh, Faro through Toad and GT for Gemstone, and Jade and JDI, which I'll talk more about in a minute. Those are Dolphin-based. We also have interfaces to other languages. 
there is a full C API for C and C++, the gem builder for C. There is a gem builder for Java interface as well, which lets you uh, talk to small talk objects from a JVM. And we have um, interfaces to what we call the third tier relational databases, Oracle and Sybase. Uh, security features. Our crypto uh, is uh, provided by OpenSSL, and we try to stay very current on the SSL versions. Um, so one of the first rules in crypto is never roll your own, and we don't. We have small talk classes which interface into the crypto and TLS libraries. Um, things like GS Secure Socket, where you can have a, an encrypted TLS connection to a peer. Um, fairly recently, we've added secure database backup and restore, where you can have an encrypted and signed gemstone backup file. I mentioned before that we have LDAP for authentication as well as single sign-on, and we're adding um, methods all the time to give you more access to the crypto libraries, things like HMAX, uh, symmetric and asymmetric encryption. Um, all done by, in the back end by OpenSSL. Uh, the platforms we run on, the object server or the database runs on these are five platforms listed, Linux, um, Apple, Darwin, Solaris, both on Spark and AMD64, and IBM on the PowerPC. Uh, for the client, it's all of the above, and we support uh, Microsoft Windows 7, 8, and 10 as well for clients. The client small tech platforms, again, VisualWorks and VA are supported platforms today. Uh, we also have a few non-GDS or non gem builder for small talk client platforms that are open source. Uh, one of them is uh, the Jade IDE, which is uh, written and maintained by James Foster. Uh, this is done in Dolphin Smalltalk. It has all the basics that you need to um, interface with Gemstone, browsers, inspectors, debuggers. It's actually quite a nice set of tools. Um, it runs on Windows only, and that's a Dolphin restriction, uh, not a Jade restriction so much but I've been told it runs on uh, Wine on the Mac fairly decently as well. The other nice thing about Jade is it supports all versions of Gemstone. What uh, is actually done is they package the, uh, the, the uh, shared libraries for every version of Gemstone with Jade, and when you log in, Jade figures out which version you have and loads the right library. It's very nice when you have multiple versions of Gemstone running. This is just a picture of the system browser. Um, it's not the refactory browser, but it's good for doing most of what you need. And then there's something new that we've been working on the last year called Jadeite, which is a fork of the Jade project. Um, and Dale talked about this a little bit yesterday with Rowan and so on. Uh, we're doing this for a, a customer, and um, it's similar to Jade and still based on Dolphin, but uh, it has some Rowan. Um, code added to it so it can manage row and packages and so on. So this is a fork of Jade and it will be um, it's on GitHub yet but it's not quite public, it's not quite ready but we're working on it. Okay, the next section is where uh, I channel my boss, Dan, who's here this year but to talk about the business side um, he likes to know I'm doing that but I've cut out a bunch of his slides so don't tell him. But you can say I talked about Uh, GemTalk's now been around for 36 years of continuous operation in one form or another. Um, if you've been known us for a while, you've known there's been various mergers and acquisitions over time, but the product's always been there. The key people have always been the same. Started in 1982, um, which is like prehistory in this business. And we changed our name to Gemstone from Servio Logic back in 95. Around 2000, we were purchased by a German conglomerate called Brocat. Um, that kind of imploded with the dot-com bust, and there was a management buyout in 2001. Uh, VMware bought us in, in 2010, 
Uh, we had a nice three years with them, but they eventually decided we weren't strategic, and um, the company was purchased from VMware by Dan in 2013, where it's been uh, since, and where it will probably be for forever. Uh, some of our biggest customers are the container shipping vertical. Um, there's two here. Uh, the one on the left is China Ocean Shipping Company, and those guys merged with a company in, in Shanghai called Costco um, about two years ago. Uh, Costco is the China Ocean Shipping Company. I think they're the second or third largest in the world. They run all of their container shipping stuff on Gemstone. They have the world's largest Gemstone repository. So it's a very big customer for us. We also have a lot of customers in the financial trading area. Um, J.P. Morgan Chase in London, Union Bank of Switzerland up in Zurich, ICE down in Atlanta, um, and a company called Momentum down in South Africa are our top customers in this space. Manufacturing as well, uh, Texas Instruments and Rudolph down in uh, Texas, HTS is a fairly new customer that's doing manufacturing software. Bob Nemec was here last year from uh, Toronto, gave a very nice presentation on what they're doing with their system called Trax, uh, gemstone based, and uh, HB Fuller out of the Midwest doing chemical manufacturing. Florida Power and Light is a long time customer of gemstone, one of the earliest. I think they've been with us since 94, if I remember right. And they have uh, two systems with us. The biggest one is TCMS, which stands for Trouble Call Management System. And this is the system that manages the call center for hurricanes in Florida. So when a hurricane comes to Florida and your power goes out and you call up the 800 number, um, the operator on the other end is inputting your information into TCMS. And that is dispatched to the various line crews and so on that go out and get the power on after the storm passes. In the telco space, uh, we've got Siemens Austria. It's been as an application called Condus, running for a long time. Also, Telecom Argentina. In the government space, uh, we're used by the Canadian Border Services Agency. Uh, they have an app that they won't tell us much about, but it has to do with scanning passports and knowing who the smugglers are. Um, in Norway, we do the uh, visa processing for the Immigration Department. It's been a long time app. And, and in the Netherlands, the Dutch Agricultural Institute uh, uses Gemstone to track um, agricultural data from farmers all over the country. Of course, we have lots of partners and value-added resellers, and VARs are, are entities that take the gemstone product, add on their own uh, stuff to it, and sell it as an application or as a cloud offering, potentially. Uh, in the community, we uh, sponsor the Ferro Consortium. We're an industrial member. Uh, we're a platinum sponsor, both ESUG and FAST. And we send people every year. So that's Dan's condensed pitch. So if he asked you, tell him I did it. <laughs> uh, product roadmap. So this next section, I'm going to be using the C word. <laughs> the cloud word that you hear a lot these days. But there's some words I won't be using. And that's this list. I won't have to say disrupt <laughs> blockchain, ICO, unicorn, I'm especially not going to say. Data scientist, I don't know what that is. <laughs> IoT, I've heard here this week, so I won't dump on that too much. But uh... So the reason I'm going to say that is in a minute I'm going to talk about what we're doing um, to support cloud computing. Um, with our current releases, uh, we have the 3.3 uh, version, which is our previous release that we're supporting. We're up to version 3.3.8 on that. 
Um, the last one was shipped the end of August. And on the 3.4, which is the current version we're supporting, um, 3.4.2 was shipped on 7.31. Um, there will be a 3.4.3 and a 3.3.9 at some point, probably this year, probably in Q4. So we're constantly finding bugs or taking bugs from our customers and fixing them and putting releases out there. 3.5 is our next major release we're working on. Um, on the GDS side, uh, GDS 8.3 was released um, last year, and we're not current on our visual support yet, but we're going to get there. Currently, we're um, so supporting up to VW 8.2.1, but we're going to be on 8.3.1 by year end. There's a few things in there that uh, need to be rearranged in GDS to make it work with the latest. Visual works. Here we get into our C word, Cloudify and Gemstone. So we've been asked by a major customer to do some of this work to be able to run Gemstone not only in the cloud but distributed from the cloud to their enterprise, which is kind of a harder problem. So I'll talk about some of the things we're doing to support that effort. Um, one thing I mentioned already is we're allowing certificate authentication for all logins and all connections. So to get any network connection or any login to Gemstone, you in this mode when you run the product, <coughs> excuse me, in cloud mode, you present a certificate and a private key that goes with it. And in that mode, those are the only credentials that are accepted. Um, cloud and friendly firewall network connections. Uh, one point about this is since we're talking about going from the customer's data center out to the cloud to support some additional computing, um, all connections must be made into the cloud and from the cloud. So you can imagine a customer doesn't want connections showing up off the open internet going in through their firewall to get into something, even if it's um, all gemstone protocol. So we've had to do quite a bit of re-engineering to make that work, but we, we've got that done. And then there's a lot of things um, in Gemstone that don't assume a high latency network between the various distributed parts that we've had to look at. Um, again, you've got some of your compute out in the cloud, some of it in-house, it's going over the internet, you know, who knows how many hops are in between. Uh, the last thing that we did is object filtering, and this is the idea where you've got some objects or some data that you don't want leaving premise for any reason, even to your own secure cloud or your own secure instance in, in AWS. Things like social security numbers, credit card numbers, things like that. There are laws in certain countries which say this data cannot leave the company. So in order to do that, uh, we have to be able to filter objects and keep the uh, stuff that we don't want to go out in-house and send the rest of the stuff that we need to do the computation tasks out to the cloud. So you end up with something looking a little bit like this, where on the right you have your traditional gemstone database server, you have a disk, a stone, and, and a cache full of a, a huge object graph. And then you've got this thing called an object filter now. And the idea there again is to screen out the sensitive data that you don't want going to the cloud. Now, when they do this, they design the app so this data should not be going out anyway. Okay. So they've abstracted their object model, there's sensitive objects, there's non-sensitive objects, only the, sens the non-sensitive objects are supposed to go over the wire to the cloud to begin with. But for the security folks, that's not good enough. They, have to, they say, you must guarantee us that even if somebody makes a programming mistake and tries to send sensitive data, that your product will not allow it. There must be a way. So that's what we had to do. Um, over, so again, you've got a distributed gemstone system here. You've got the files or the file, the database files, the extents sitting inside the customer's data center, and then out in the cloud, you've really added memory and CPU resources to do computations or host VMs or whatever it is out in the cloud, and those do have to stay in sync. The, uh, you see the connections here, you notice the arrows only go one way from the database server to the cloud, not the reverse. That's the way the connections are initiated. And those connections are set up with a private key and certificate. 
So this is really what we've been working on the last year or so in 3.5. Um, some other things in 3.5 are something we call solo mode. We're still debating the name of this, but I think solo is going to stick. Uh, what this is, is basically you can run Topaz, our command line interface, and execute small talk without having a running database. So that leads to being able to do small talk scripting from the command line. A uh, very trivial example here is we start up a Topaz section and get a TLS connection to Google. There's no database running here. There's just what you have to have is the database file sitting out there in read-only mode. But there, there's, there's no other sessions. The database isn't actually started. Okay, so it's, you see their successful solo login, and then we um, we just run this example GS Secure Socket client example for host Google.com, and we go out and we get a get a response from Google. Very trivial example, but that's kind of the idea. So you can take this to the next level and write a shebang script in shell that fires up Topaz and runs your script in Smalltalk with all the classes that are built into Gemstone at your disposal. Also in version 3.5, uh, we're going to upgrade to OpenSSL 1.1.1, which was actually released yesterday. Um, that brings us TLS 1.3, and um, that's kind of nice to have. Don't even forget about this, but when you set up uh, secure connections, you save a round trip, I think at least one for every connection you set up. So the idea is once TLS 1.3 goes across the internet, when you click on that secure HTTPS site, the site should load faster. Also, the SHA-3 primitives in that that we'll be uh, adding small talk accessors to. Uh, we're going to add some stuff to the base image. For sure, at this point, we know the Rowan stuff is going to be in there. We're going to do a port of file tree that's already in progress and some parts of the same. Probably not all of it, but some of it. And if you've got suggestions what things that are really useful in small talk you'd like to see in the gemstone base image out of the box, drop us a line. <coughs> So beyond 3.5, um, you guys familiar with this Saturday Night Live skit yeah. from 2000? More, more cowbell? For us, a small talk is our cowbell. So we always want more cowbell. And what that means is we are going to support Pharaoh natively at some time in the future. We don't know when or what that's going to look like yet, uh, so I can't really say a lot more about it because we don't know. But uh, the decision to go this direction has been made. Uh, coming to the end here, just our licensing models. Uh, we have community editions, which are freeze and beer for any use, including commercial. Uh, perpetual licenses, buy once, own forever. Annual subscription, where you pay, cancel any time. And the bar model, where you take Gemstone and build your application on top of it, resell it, and give us a uh, percentage of the royalties off of it. Also requested last year was adding GBS to the community edition. <coughs> We've decided to go ahead and do that. So. Gem Builder for Small Talk for Visual Works and Visual Age is now part of the community edition. You can use for free for any purpose. And there's the link down. Uh, this is the pricing for the community edition. Um, starts at free and then it kind of ramps up the more you use. With the community edition there are uh, usage restrictions, mostly with a size and object count and things like that. You get the full function product. But the idea is if you really want to scale and, and run Facebook on Gemstone, you really should pay us something. <laughs> uh, Gemstone support, the paid support is we have web support 24-7 worldwide. Uh, Help request a process 8 to 5 Pacific. 24-7 uh, support for customers that want to pay extra to call us in the middle of the night if they have a production outage or something. 
Um, we also have free list server support. There's two lists out there. I, didn't, I know a lot of people here are on this, um, where you can ask questions and uh, the engineers as well as long-time Gemstone users will try to answer your questions. <clears throat> uh, somebody said this yesterday, and I just have to bring this up. Gemstone is too expensive. Um, there was a time probably when that was true. Probably 15 years ago. Um, I was around then, I was part of the company then, I remember those days, but um, I just, I want to call this out a little bit because it hasn't been true for a long time. It's kind of one of those things that used to be true that is no longer true. Um, you know, like vaccines cause autism, we used to, some people used to think that. It's pretty much been debunked these days. Or, you know, Fox News is news. <laughs> <laughs> it's also been debunked, I think. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, Reg. Um, you're doing the solo mode, but have you ever given any thought to be for some disconnected situation where you want to bring objects over, you're in a position where you're disconnected, the person needs to work with it, and then you can reconnect? Would that be another step with solo? If not, solo obviously doesn't do that, but would it be a step down the road towards that? Possibly. It's not something I don't think we've thought about a lot, but um, I should talk offline. I'd like to hear more about what you got in mind for that. Yeah, okay. Uh, more questions? Yeah. Could I explain why there's no gemstone server for Windows? Um, let me see if I can think of the PG explanation. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I'll have a demo of it. <laughs> really? <laughs> I can't wait to see that. <laughs> Sorry, do you have a demo of why it's not there? Yeah, are you going to demo Gemstone running in server in Windows, or why it's not, why we haven't done it? Um, in Windows. It's just running in Linux Docker. Oh, <laughs> not, not Docker. There's a Linux. Okay. There's there's a Linux for Windows. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I did uh, read something about that. Yeah. Uh, the answer is that Windows is unlike if you've ever written any C code in Windows, and Gemstone is written in C and C plus plus. The programming model there is unlike any other um, platform that we run on, and there really just hasn't been the demand to support the cost of doing it. Uh, we get that question every now and again. I think it's been a couple of years since someone's asked me that. Um, but because you can run um, you know, a Linux VM on top of your Windows server, most customers that want to run Windows uh, at the bottom, just do that. Um, but I guess the answer would be the cost to doing it is uh, prohibitive from a business point of view where there wouldn't be enough uh, you know, revenue to support it. And if you've ever written any C code in Windows, you know how much fun that is. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah? Yes, why do you mention GBS for VA? Um, GBS for VA is still around. It doesn't have a high customer usage, so we haven't been paying attention to it that much, but it is still there. We're trying to keep up with the GBF, with the VA releases. Uh, we're up to 8.63. Um, we're not getting rid of it, so I don't want to start any rumors, but um, we only have a handful of customers doing uh, GBS for VA right now. But uh, it's around. Um, the main thing is uh, there is a 64-bit, I guess, VA right now, and it's a fair piece of work to make GBS run on, on VA64. Uh, that may happen. We haven't had any paying customers yet come to us to say we want to do that. Thank you very much.